Hi everyone, in one of my previous videos I talked about divorce and remarriage. I mostly focused on divorce and that's why some of you asked me a few questions about remarriage. Some of you still ask me if you can remarry or is remarriage considered adultery? So in this video we're going to delve into the Bible to see what God's Word says about remarriage. Let's get to it. All right, now let's go straight into God's Word. Luke 16, verse 18. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. Now just reading that verse, a lot of people think, okay, so you can't remarry. But then if you read other verses in the Bible, then you can. Verses like Romans 7, verse 2. A married woman is bound by law to her husband, while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. So here, it is not wrong if you want to marry someone else because your husband or your wife already passed away. Then you can remarry someone else. So if we go back to Luke 16 verse 18, it's not saying that you cannot remarry. It's just basically saying that if you divorce your partner just so that you can marry someone else, then yes, it is wrong. Listen to it again. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. If you want to divorce your current husband or wife because of someone else, then you are the cause of the divorce. And we know. Matthew 19 verse 6 says, So they are no longer two, but one in flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. Now we all know that God created the marriage and we should not just take it lightly. In fact, we should keep it in honor among all things. Hebrews 13 verse 4, Let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. In marriage, sexual immorality is one of the worst things that you can do. In fact, it is so terrible to God that if your husband or your wife cheats on you, then you are allowed to divorce them. Matthew 5 verse 32, But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now please understand that God's Word never commands you or never says that you have to divorce someone. It just gives you permission to do so in certain circumstances. Now. Some of you also asked me in the comment section of the previous video, what about abuse? Physical abuse, emotional abuse, what does the Bible say about that? Can you divorce someone? Well, when it comes to divorce, the Bible doesn't say anything specifically about that. But we do know that God is against any form of abuse. And that is not what a marriage should ever look like. A marriage should look like this. Ephesians 5 verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her, that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the Word, so that He might present the church to Himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. It doesn't say abuses, it says nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of His body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. You know, it is easy for a wife to respect her husband when the husband lives righteously before God. When his aim is to be like Jesus Christ, when he is a good example, when he treats her kind, loving, passionate, when he is nourishing her, taking care of her, the way that Jesus Christ takes care of us, the church. Jesus gave His life 
for the church. That's how much He loves us. And that's how we should treat our wives as well. Husbands, you're not the boss. Oh, I'm the boss. No, 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 no. You can only lead when you listen to Jesus Christ. If you say things that are not in line with Scripture, then your wife doesn't have to listen to you. But when you say things from the Spirit, from God, then yes, I think the woman would love it to listen to you, to follow you as the leader of the house, because then you are a great example and you're doing what God says you have to do. But if not, if you abuse us, sir, let me make this clear. Abuse, there is no room for abuse in the marriage. And there is also no room for abandonment in the marriage. If you are being abused, Sometimes men are being abused and sometimes women are being abused. Let's not just focus on one sex here. If you are being abused, then please know that God does not want you to stay in that situation, especially when it gets dangerous. Get out, find a safe place for you and the kids if there are any. And remember, you also have the right to defend yourself. Luke 22 verse 35, And He said to them, when I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, nothing. He said to them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack. And listen to this, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors, for what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, it's enough. So there are times when you can defend yourself, when you can stand your ground, especially when it comes to the Word of God, to stand on the Word of God, to put on the armor of God and to fight. But then there are also times when you should turn the other cheek. And then there are also times when you should avoid the other person. Romans 16 verse 17, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. Now let me just talk about this a little bit longer. When you turn your cheek in certain situations, that doesn't mean that people can just walk all over you. There are certain times for certain things and you need to be wise to know when you should act a certain way. And turning the cheek means not to repay evil for evil. It's not an eye for an eye thing. There are times where you just need to keep your side clean. And by doing this, you let your enemies look at you at a different way. Because it doesn't matter what they do to you, you still stay the same. You are the light of Christ and they can't move you. They can't influence you at all. Matthew 5 verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. So you have to be wise in everything that you do, in every single situation. Let God lead you through the Holy Spirit. And remember this always, keep your side clean, stay innocent. Matthew 10 verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Now, if you have been abandoned by your husband, your wife, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, you want to marry someone else, then you can do so if God wants you to. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 15, but if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. God has called you to peace. Remember, the Holy Spirit will always lead you with discernment and peace. So if you don't feel peace about something, then you know, mm, I should not continue with this. So can you divorce your partner? Yes, but remember, it is not a command of God, but it is permitted in certain situations. God never wants you to divorce someone. Even if you're married to an unbeliever, God wants you to try and work it out first. Remember, marriage is hard work, even for Christian couples. People divorce too easily these days. And then they leave the kids, all the pain and damage they cause to those kids for years to come. Try to work it out first with, very important, with God in the middle. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 12. 
To the rest I say, I, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. I've heard of a few examples. People who got married before they were saved, then one of them got saved, and then, whew, <laughs> it was chaos in that house. But then, God led the other partner to salvation through the one person that stayed in the marriage, that tried to make it work by their example, to show how God changed them. And then through that one person, God changed the husband or the wife. So, let's just talk about remarriage a little bit again. Can you remarry someone else after divorce? Yes, I've said it already in certain situations. But you also need to know that the Bible says that for some people, it is actually better to remain single. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 8 To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single, as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. If you are on the brink of divorce or remarriage, please just wait a little bit and make sure it is God's will. Don't be hasty. You can't make this decision without God. A big decision like divorce or remarriage is not just about you. It's about God. It's about your partner, your children and their children. The choices you make will be like ripple effects that flow into the future. And it will be like dominoes in certain situations. It will change things. So you need to make sure that you're doing what God wants you to do. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 17. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. This is far more important than you may think. Let me give you an example of my own life. My dad dated another woman before my mom. But then he became a reborn Christian and then God told him the girl he was dating is not going to be his wife. And that he needed to trust God to send him his wife that he should marry. First, he rejected. He didn't want to do that because he said, God, you could take forever. But then at the end, he submitted and he went to the girl he was seeing and said to her, I'm sorry, but it's not going to work. And then he waited and then God sent him my mom. <laughs> If my dad did not listen to God in that moment, at that time, then I would not have been here and I would not share the gospel to the whole world. And so you need to trust God. Pray to Him, talk to Him about divorce and remarriage. It is bigger than you may think it is. It's not just, oh, I'm going to divorce this person or, okay, let's, let's, let's marry, let's remarry. No, it's bigger than that. You need to trust God who knows the future. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. You need to trust God with everything. And that includes your relationships with other people. And when it comes to divorce, remarriage, and about just your marriage, how you should be as a woman, how you should be as a man, in the marriage, as a father, as a mother, all of it. You do it the way God wants you to do it. Trust God. Don't lean on your own understanding. He knows the future. He knows what your children's, 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 children's path is going to be. What He has planned for them. Trust God. And if you want to know what the role is of the wife, or what the role is of the husband in marriage. And watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life.